evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Berean Baptist Church, Pendleton, Oregon, the place with the ever-changing weather forecast. And uh, we're learning everything about the character of water this weekend. We're learning what happens uh, when water is a solid. We're learning what happens when a water is a liquid. We're learning what happens when water is halfway between a solid and a liquid. And welcome to Slush Fest 2021. And I, I'm glad that a few of you decided to brave the slush fest and came in your car slash boat slash snowmobile slash RV, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to begin by singing. The song is number 20. And let's stand as we sing. All right. That's, I'm standing on the solid rock. Standing. We get it? Standing. <laughs> number 20. All together now. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages, rich. But not from Satan's wages, standing on solid rock. Even though he's gone now, with comfort comes the Spirit of the Lord. Now with his word he guide me from temptations hide me. I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages, rich but not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. Now I'm pressing onward, each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation, so on the solid rock I'll stay. I'm standing on the rock of ages, safe from all the storm that rages, rich, but not from Satan's wages, standing on the solid going to begin with a word of prayer tonight and just letting you know uh, we're going to move things along tonight because uh, right now we're right about the freezing mark and all those wonderful ruts that uh, your uh, cars went through are in the next couple hours are going to become immovable so uh, I don't want you to have to be here overly overly long so we'll have a word of prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that we can come into your house, that we can worship together, and that we can pray together. Uh, these things that are so very important uh, for such a time as this, uh, for a, a time of great crisis in our nation, a time where churches have not met enough, a time where churches have not prayed together enough. And over the year 2020, Lord, uh, we saw the results of non-prayer. And so we pray, Lord, help us uh, to do better this year. Mm -hmm. Help us to commit ourselves anew, to draw close to you mm -hmm. because of the urgency of the hour. Mm -hmm. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. All right, we'll continue singing number 29. We are more the conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Sing it through twice. Number 29. All together now. We are more than conquerors Through him that loved us so The Christ who dwells within us Is the greatest power we know He will fight beside us stand against us he's the captain of our faith and we will 
will conquer, never fear. So let the battle rage. He has promised to be near unto the end of the age. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us so. The Christ who dwells within us is the greatest power we know. One more time. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us so. The Christ who dwells within us is the greatest power we know. He will fight beside us though the enemy can stand against us. He's the captain of our fate. Then we will conquer, never fear. So let the battle rage. He has promised to be near unto the end of the age. We are more than conquerors. So the Christ who dwells within us is the greatest power we know. Amen. Wonderful singing for those of you that are here. Um, I see, I remember a week ago we were dealing with something like this and it was uh, Southside Baptist was all here and Northside Baptist had not shown up. Now it's completely flipped, I notice. Uh, but let me go through the calendar as it is. And um, um, I feel like almost everything I'm, I'm going to tell you is in parentheses. I, um, I don't know if I want to be dogmatic about anything. Uh, but I'll start with this. Okay, tomorrow, Faith Bible Institute is at 630. And I am going out on a limb and saying, that is going to happen. And so I will say that. Um, uh, for those with the Homeschool Association, be in contact with Mrs. Andreessen, uh, find out what's happening with that. Um, I am thankful that we were able to find somebody to plow the church parking lot. I was sure to get his business card for future years and future events, just in case we need that. Um, this Saturday, we will have uh, men's prayer and coffee. Outreach is on the calendar scheduled. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Homeschool Association dinner, 6 o'clock at the church. Okay, for those of you involved in the Homeschool Association, uh, that is on the calendar for 6 p.m. Uh, we have, um, again, men's prayer at 8.30. Church outreach is on the calendar for 10 a.m. Some of that is going to depend on snow melt. Uh, the snow needs to melt some. Today would be an awful day for outreach. And so uh, we'll keep you posted on that as uh, time goes on. Again, our annual meeting is scheduled for one week from tonight. Uh, rather than being upstairs, it will be downstairs in the fellowship hall. This coming Sunday, it was supposed to be this past Sunday, but this coming Sunday is Marriage Sunday, where we honor the institution of marriage. If uh, you are a married couple that is going to be here, I encourage you to dress up a little bit. It is going to be a special day, and we do have a gift uh, for every uh, married couple and every engaged couple uh, that will be coming on Sunday. So just uh, letting you know those things that are going on presently, and uh, for those of you that are here tonight, thank you for being faithful. If you're watching live stream, thank you for being faithful there as well. Um, uh, somebody said, this hasn't, this hasn't happened in years and years and years. And my wife and I looked at each other and we realized, oh yeah, it was two years ago. <laughs> it's exactly two years ago uh, when we were trying to get home through snow drifts and everything to a Sunday morning service here at Brain Baptist Church. So it has happened some before. So... Uh, just uh, keeping you posted on these things, again, 
We do need you to sign up for the annual meeting. If you're a church member and you haven't signed up or a prospective member haven't signed up, uh, we do need you to sign up for that. Again, the ladies' meeting has been moved out two Saturdays. And so I'm trying to get the, the 27th of February, Saturday the 27th of February, is when uh, the ladies' fellowship meeting is, is now going to take place. So, anyway, just letting you know about that. Okay, we're going to sing another song, and that song is 439. 439, stepping in the light. Let's all stand one more time. Remain standing for the reading of God's Word. 439. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to follow Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, happy, happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful the walk in the steps of the, the Savior, King. stepping in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of life. Pressing more closely to Him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that strong to defend us, happy, how happy, crazy day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of life. Pressing the steps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to him for the grace freely promised. Happy, how happy, me above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Walking in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of life. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, we'll follow our guide. When we shall see him, the King in his beauty, happy, how happy, place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. Full to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Amen. Please remain standing and turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. Book of Matthew, chapter 11. Uh, for those um, of members of Berean Baptist Church that find themselves sequestered in their homes right now, I did put out. Uh, a mass uh, text, and in that mass text I indicated, if you want a prayer list, then let me know and I will email one to you. And so this is um, a picture of what that looks like. And so far out of all the masses of you, one of you has asked for the request. And so if somebody else you go, oh, oh, oh I really did want a prayer list. You will get one if you ask me, but not until service is over. And so last time I did this, somebody sent me a text in the middle of service, can I have one? To which my answer was, not now, you can't. So anyway, is there anybody else who needs one? You did not get one, you do not have a prayer list. We're getting those taken care of. Again, book of Matthew, looking at chapter 11. Book of Matthew, chapter 11, and I am looking in verse 2. And the Bible says, 
Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And what is interesting about all that, he's giving, okay, this is what is happening. And then he makes one more statement. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be glorified tonight through your word about your Son, Jesus Christ. And we owe him all things. We owe him our souls. We owe him our very lives. And we thank you for your wonderful love and grace that you have bestowed toward us. And it would seem that communicating with the world at large right now has become very, very difficult. But you have given us a path and a purpose. So help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For those of you that were following the headlines, a, a radio legend died today, as all men will die. Uh, men are now lining up to sing his praises and others are lining up to dance on his grave. Those who are in the latter category show the foolishness of youth, for they also shall grow old and die. They cannot prevent it. There are those who are constantly offensive. They cannot help themselves. There are those who are constantly offended. They cannot help themselves. But Jesus came to help both. But there is a requirement, looking again at verse 6, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The title of the message is Bringing Peace to the World of the offendable. And you know, in my earthly life, I don't think I can remember a time in my life when so many people in the nation that I live are so offended. Everything offends them. Everything makes them mad. I've told you this before. Comedians say, we can't tell a joke anymore. It's going to make somebody mad. And uh, we'd like to say, yes, all that anger and all that hate is over on that side. But honestly, it's on both sides. And so how do we should know what to do and should know better? How do we, God's children, bring peace to the world of the offendable. Let me give you two points tonight. I know you feel you're being shorted. You're only getting two instead of three. But I'm giving you two tonight. First of all is to understand this. When it comes to peace, Jesus is the authority. In fact, the scripture gives him a title. And uh, many of you are familiar with that title when you look at the prophecy of Christ's coming and it gives him multiple titles in Acts chapter 9, verse 6, where it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's a very important statement. It means no matter who thinks they're in charge, Jesus is going to be in charge. It's not going to matter. There's going to come a day and Jesus is going to be completely in charge. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And what I find interesting is 
Remember, God makes no mistakes in the order he puts things in. And so God decided that wonderful would be the first thing on the list. And God decided that the Prince of Peace would be the last thing on the list. And you go, why did... And, and um, uh, Brother Sexteder knows this because he's a choir director. There are two notes that are the most important notes in any choir anthem. The first note and the last note. And so God's given us the first note. The first note's wonderful. Everything's important in between. The last note is the prince of peace. And the term prince in scripture denotes authority. So Christ is the authority when it comes to peace. He's been given the title. It'd be like if for some reason, um, say, Dylan and Jared were playing King of the Snow Pile, um, which they'd prefer better than King of the Slush Pile, which is all you have to work with now. Uh, but if they're playing King of the Snow Pile, whoever is King of the Snow Pile is the authority. Jesus, when it comes to peace, Jesus is the King. He is the authority. He is the Prince of Peace. He's been given the title. And having been given the title, it's important because what Jesus has brought is something only he can make. Nobody else can truly make it. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, looking at verse 14, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, who did it? Jesus did it, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us in this particular case, in the context, we're talking about the wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile. Though I suppose it has a hundred applications. It could be between anybody and anybody. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, that is two, one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby so we have this we has he's been given the title but we also have that he has brought what only he can make and that is peace is there anyone here who has lived long enough to observe that mankind is really lousy at making peace? They're really not good at it. Uh, they make treaties, and uh, one of the reasons is because every promise man makes, man can break. Uh, this is why many of you can get frustrated with um, documents that exist in our country. You know, we have a constitution, and we have amendments, and we have a Bill of Rights, and you go, I am so angry, and I am so frustrated. Mankind is breaking his rules. Yep, that's what he does. He's really good at it. But there's somebody who'll never break his rules, and that is Jesus. And so if Jesus is the one who's making peace, he can do it, and he will do it, and he has done it. He has brought what only he can make, and he is the only one actually who can give it. He is the only source. In John 14, looking at verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So when it comes to peace, Jesus is the authority. He's been given the title, Prince of Peace. He has brought what only he can make. It says in the scripture, so making peace. And he is the giver. As it says, my peace I give unto you. Well, if it, then when it comes to peace... Jesus is the authority, and Jesus made it, and 
Jesus is the source, then what about us? Well, you see, Jesus is the authority, but when it comes to peace, we are the stewards. Somebody once described it this way. Whoever is the authority, they have ownership. Whoever is the steward, they have responsibility. They don't have ownership, they have responsibility. We are not owners of peace, we are stewards of peace. And Jesus has given his peace to us to do something with. We are his stewards. So, let's talk about this. When it comes to peace, we are the stewards. It starts with the blessing of character. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and in, in a... Jesus speaking to his disciples, we often call this the Beatitudes, um, which is a way of saying the blessings. But I want you to notice this particular character that is a blessing of God and that Jesus wants us to have and to use because we're stewards of it. And that is in Matthew chapter 5, looking at verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, meek does not mean weak. It never has meant weak. Uh, the term, by description, it does mean humble, but it also, there's this other very interesting term with the term meek. It is mild. And when you think of mild, what do you think of? Um, often we think a mild, it's going to be neither hot nor is it going to be cold. It's going to be mild today. It's going to be even today. And the character of being meek is the idea of being mild, mild manner, even keel. Blessed are those who are even keel. How many of you said, I could use a few even keel people in my life right now? We live right now where nobody seems to be even keel at all. And somebody goes, well, I can't be mild because if I were mild, I wouldn't be dogmatic. Says who? You can be a dogmatic, even keel, mild person. You know, you know, the person um, on the other side of you is saying something and you quietly say, well, no, that's not right. And they have a nuclear detonation and blow up all over you. And after they're done, say, yeah, yeah, that's not right. You don't have to blow it back. You, we don't have to have dueling volcanoes. Blessed are the meek. You know, what's interesting is they, they talk about calming people down. They said, whatever you do, don't raise your voice. That seems to be all anybody knows how to do now is raise their voice. It starts with the blessing of character. The idea, blessed are the meek, you can be mild, you can be dogmatic, and you can believe every conviction you have, and you can even state it. You just don't have to state it loudly. You don't have to state it angrily. You just state it mildly. Also this, it continues with wisdom from the possessor, the one who possesses wisdom. Keep your finger in Matthew chapter 5, turn to James chapter 3. Don't lose Matthew chapter 5. Let's turn to the book of James. Book of James chapter 3, and it talks about wisdom. And you know, sometimes we think, what are the fruits of a thing? What are the characteristics what are the indications of a thing? What is the character and indication of wisdom? The Bible says this in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above. Okay, so we have identification here. We have an identification. The wisdom that is from heaven. The wisdom that is from God. Is first pure. Then, oh there's that word. Peaceable. Oh, here's another word, gentle. You can 
um, categorize that under the meek category. And easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And so it starts with the blessing of character, but it continues with wisdom from the possessor. Who possesses wisdom? It's God who possesses the wisdom. Who possesses the peace? Well, it is God that possesses the peace. And I guess when you look at this, I guess there's no such thing as wild wisdom. I guess it's just wisdom from above. It continues with wisdom from the possessor. Now, look at the next verse. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And you went, well, it's Jesus who makes peace. Yes, but remember, it's stewardship. And so with that stewardship, we now have the responsibility with the peace that Christ has given us to make peace as well. It, in other words, it continues with the wisdom of the possessor. It is propagated through endless manufacture. Why do you use the word endless, Pastor? Well, because it seems that you really have to spend your entire life making peace. It's something that you're going to need to do over and over and over and over again. And look at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, which uh, drives this point home. It says... Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And you may go, uh, sometimes I find it interested, interesting, and I kind of want to do a whole study on inherit the earth, they shall be filled, they shall obtain, they shall see God. I want to do a whole study on that. But I get to verse 9, and it said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And why the children of God? Because it is God where the peace comes from. And so the peace is there. It didn't come from anywhere else, nor did it come from anyone else. The Bible says, is as much as within you, live peaceably with all men. And, and this is the reality we face where we are, is that there are some who will never know anything but offense and defendability. But for those looking for something else, let them find it in us as we point them to the Prince of Peace. The one who we heard say at the beginning, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look at the difficulty of our day, where on the outside we hear of wars and rumors of wars, and on the inside it seems we hear nothing but endless conflict. Help us, Lord, not to be the ones that are the conflictors. Help us to learn how, as your stewards, to be the peacemakers because there are those who are looking for some peace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand. Sing song number 470. It is a song about peace. Uh, we'll sing the first, third, and fifth verses of this song called Wonderful Peace, number 470. 470.
So oh. 